The playoffs are so big in Northern Michigan, we need two guest analysts to help us break it all down. James Cook and Chris Dobrovolsky of the Traverse City Record. They've been joining us all year round separately, but we need them both here to uh, give us an executive look at the lineup this weekend for the pre-district round. Guys, first off, I'm going to ask you, what's the most exciting matchup we have in this opening round of the playoffs? Uh, I'm, I'm liking the, uh, the Elk rapids Boyne City game. Um, rematch of the game a couple weeks ago. Same place, just two weeks later. And uh, we'll see if the Elks can pull it out this time, although, you know, Boyne's obviously got the home field advantage. I'm going to go with that same matchup, too. you got to like a rematch of two conference foes, so obviously the, the hostility between rivals like that is going to be real interesting. And then you got to wonder if uh, the quarterback for Boyne, Corey Redmond, if he's going to um, if he's going to play, if he's going to be 100% healthy. So that's going to obviously make a difference in, in how the outcome comes out. We've heard rumblings that he may or may not be on the field Friday night, so that'll be interesting to see if the Ramblers can still get their second win over the Elks this year, even without their star quarterback. Certainly plenty of weapons to uh, get the points regardless, but uh, he's a big part of that offense. All right, guys, we're going to mm -hmm. go now to an intriguing matchup, something that caught your eye when you were looking down the list for this uh, round in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I like the, uh, the Grayling-Kingsford game. Uh, last year, despite being 9-0, and Grayling had to go play in Kingsford, make that trip, and it uh, didn't turn out very well. This year, Grayling's only 8-1, and but they still get a home game, and they're playing Kingsford again, so they get to maybe exact a little bit of revenge on their home field this time around, and uh, that should be a pretty interesting one. I'm going to go with Glen Lake and Lakeview. Uh, Glen Lake going to be at home this week, and that's going to be obviously a big, huge advantage for them. And it's just intriguing to me because you're looking at a team like Lakeview that really nobody around here knows anything about them. And, you know, kind of see what they have to bring to the table and see how Glen Lake can match up against that. And that's kind of the dangers of now being in the postseason. Some teams are going to play familiar teams like Elk Rapids, Boyne City. Others are going up against teams from the UP, from down south, that they really haven't had any judgment on all year. So that's certainly one risk you take in playing those out of area teams. All right, guys, upset <coughs> special time. It's a part of every critical analysis of a playoff bracket. We got a lot of teams, 20, around 20, maybe more than 20 uh, total local teams uh, comparing viewing areas. I know the record was a little smaller than ours, but uh, who, do, who do you see? Who's got the chance who's going on the road to uh, pull off an upset? Well, I think both of us like uh, a five and four team over a nine and zero team in the first round. And one that's going to have to make a, a real long trek, too. Um, but Eight that, hours. Eight hours yeah, of the trip. Yeah, St. Francis over uh, West Iron County. Um, you know, this is a, the, West Iron County hasn't made the playoffs for quite a while, so this is kind of a new thing for them. It's kind of old hat for St. Francis. And uh, being an underdog on the road, not a, not a new thing for them. They've always done pretty well in the UP. For me, I think it's, it's an upset, maybe only by seed only, because, you know, you're looking at them being a, a three seed and, Western County being a two seed in this in this bracket, but you know I think St. Francis has just played a harder schedule. I don't know if Western County's really seen a team like them or faced the type of competition throughout the year that St. Francis has, and I I think that's going to be a, a good preparer for St. Francis. You know I think that's going to be the difference for the Glads. All right, guys, if you had to put the house money on one team to make a run for a state championship in our area, which one do you think's got the best chance to get to Fort Field? A uh, Cadillac. I mean. 9-0, and they've proven it against a, a tough Big North Conference. You know, obviously they'd have to run up against maybe a Comstock Park or somebody like that a couple mm -hmm. rounds deep, but you know, those first two games I think are going to be a cakewalk for them. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I take somebody different, I would say uh, Lake City. Why not? 8-1, and one, Division 7, you never know. One loss to a state finals last year that went to overtime. Yeah, give the best mm -hmm. game that Beale City's had all year and by Lakes, far. And Lake City was in the regional last year, I believe. And then, in my opinion, I've only seen them the one time for one quarter, but they, they are probably more talented than they were last year. Mm -hmm. All those guys are back. There's more experience. They score whenever they want. Dynamic quarterback. So mm -hmm. I like the picks. Yeah. 